In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We call upon God's mercy because he is full of love and compassion for us. Lord Jesus, you guide us by your law of love. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you conquer sin and conquer death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you desire to fill us with your spirit so that we may bear good fruit. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, draw near to your servants and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, the column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke to Moses. On seeing the column of cloud stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Moses would then return to the camp, but his young assistants, Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses stood there with the Lord and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus, the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin, yet not declaring the guilty guiltless, but punishing children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for their father's wickedness. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do not do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness, wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. So Moses stayed there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights without eating any food or drinking any water. And he wrote on the tablets 
the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The word of the Lord, the responsorial psalm, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. And just as weeds are collected and burnt up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. I think from the gospel, it's very obvious Jesus is talking about two kinds of people, the good guys, the bad guys, the evildoers, those who try to do good. And in some ways, Moses, in the first reading from Exodus, is also talking about two different kinds of people, those who live in the mercy of this God, the Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity. And then there's others who turn away from that God, and God promises really tough times for them, and not only them, in a bit of Old Testament exaggeration for your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Jesus changes that. But nevertheless, two kinds of people, good guys, bad guys. And I would just like to suggest that one way to know whether you're a good girl or a bad girl, or getting a better girl or a worse girl, <laughs> in other words, where you are, is, is to do every day, and sometimes maybe even a couple of times a day, 
just lightly. What they used to call in the old seminaries and nuns and convents and stuff, an examination of conscience. I did this wrong, I did that wrong, I did the other thing wrong, I did something else wrong. God, I missed that up again today, oh my goodness. And it could help, it could really help. In, in a deeper, richer way, they began to also say, it's not just your conscience, what I did wrong, but your consciousness. What's going on up there? What's going on up there if, you know, you've, you just had an encounter with your grandchild, your neighbor, your friend, the lady down the block, and she drove you freaking nuts. I mean, before she even got a word out of her mouth, you were ready to choke her. Now, something's wrong up there. <laughs> but if you don't take a few minutes, either right then, or maybe, you know, at lunchtime or at night, what, were, what was going on up there today? Who was I today? Was I more like this child of God, the merciful, the gracious one, slow to anger, rich in kindness? Or was I like somebody sowing weeds and jumping down everybody's throats? And the thing is, if we don't do that fairly often, we really slip, and we, we just kind of think of ourselves, well, I'm, I, you're here at Mass. My God, you must be lovely, holy Christian people. And I'm sure you are. But if you're like me, Father Don crosses me the wrong way, he combs his hair the wrong way, and I'm saying, what the hell is LaSalle up to this time? It just comes. And luckily, if <laughs> later on I said, are you stupid idiot, what are you doing? What's going on up here? And if you don't examine it and look at it and reflect on it, you'll never know. And if you don't examine it and look at it, the danger is it will take over. That more and more, the bad side will jump. And even if you're a very good person, you, you lose ground. You become more selfish than you realize, more self-centered than you imagine. So I would just ex say every day, a little bit, find a quiet time, just who was I today? What did I do? What was I feeling? Who am I? And see what happens over a course of weeks and months. As Jesus says, whoever has ears ought, ought to hear. I got to tell you, Father Don did nothing wrong today. <laughs> the day is still young. Oh, my God. <laughs> so let us offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the church. We pray for one another that we may reflect the mercy and compassion of God, we pray to the Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit may guide us, make us more and more aware each day of the ways we're called to grow. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick, we pray for Father Jim Brady, who's recovering from surgery, for Father Jerry Fitzsimmons, who will have surgery tomorrow. And the Mass today is offered for Troy, a young boy, 15 years old, who's dealing with very serious cancer. We pray also for those who are suffering from COVID and for all those we know who need God's healing. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died. We pray for Leo Moynihan, for Nadia Milan, that Nadia and Leo and all those who have gone before us may be welcomed into the happiness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we carry in our hearts, Let's pause for a moment in silence.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you desire what is good for us. We come before you with our needs and our prayers, and we ask you to accept them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. And so the Lord accept your sacrifice and your lives for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you, Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Filled with the Spirit of Jesus, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For his kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life.
So for the reception of communion, if you have a mask, we ask that you please put it on and then come forward down the center aisle for communion. The Archbishop strongly recommends that you receive communion in the hand as a safer way of receiving. However, if you want to receive on the tongue, then just stay where you are. And after the others have come forward, just, just uh, call us over to you. We'll come to you and give you communion on the tongue. Also, if walking is a difficulty, stay where you are, raise your hand, we'll bring communion to you in your place.
Let us pray. O Lord, accompany with constant protection those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Well, the gift shop is open today if you want to stop by after Mass. It's in Pilgrim Hall, the large brick building down the pathway. And enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you for joining us today.